and hello YouTube. This is Thomas Judge back once again with another YouTube video. And this is another one which fits in my random thoughts category on my YouTube channel. What I want to do today is just talk about a few things um, that I personally find really annoying. This isn't a negative video. It's definitely not meant to be a negative clickbait outrage video. That's not my style. But this is talking about a couple of things that I find really, really annoying. One thing I just want to say before I even dive into it, this hasn't been prompted by anything anyone has said on my channel recently in the last couple of weeks or even months. Um, the last time I did a video kind of just highlighting something that annoyed me, I suddenly realised that actually some people that had recently asked me similar things or said similar things to me probably felt it was directed at them, and that absolutely is not the case. This is something that has been bothering me, and I want to talk about these things that have been bothering me for literally five or six years across many, many different arenas from YouTube to Twitter to lots of people that I meet in real life. So please, this is in the most broad way, not pointed at a single person. But what I want to talk about are three things that just randomly annoy me. And uh, I've been meaning to make this video for a while. So no further ado, let's dive right into it. One of the most annoying questions that I get from people when it comes to, I say comics, but really any kind of media is when someone, they come into my library, I don't let many people into my library at all, to be honest, but you know, they come into my library or we're chatting about comics, you know, we're in a bookshop or something, and they'll turn to me and they'll go, hey, what's your favourite comic? And they'll phrase it in different ways, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, well, you know, what if you were stuck in a desert island for a year, what comic would you take with you? Or people go, um, oh, if your flat was on fire and you only could grab one thing from your library, what would that one thing be? I mean, yeah, I, I get these questions. They're not unusual questions. But I'll be honest, these are the questions that you ask a fucking child. I don't have a favourite comic. The same way that I don't have a favourite film or a favourite book or a favourite song. I don't have a favourite comic because I'm not a fucking nine-year-old. I'm an adult man in his 40s. I don't have a favourite anything. I don't have a favourite flavour of ice cream or a favourite meal or a favourite t-shirt. I have lots of things that I like and I like for different reasons. There's no particular movie that I say is my favourite movie in the world because depending on my mood, I might have a movie that I watch when I fancy a comedy or I fancy a drama or when I fancy a superhero movie or if I fancy a DC superhero movie or a Marvel superhero movie or an independent superhero movie. It's a simple thing which people tend not to think about because they treat other people like children. No one really has a favourite thing that's truly their favourite under all circumstances. If you're a fan of chocolate ice cream, that might be because you prefer chocolate ice cream over vanilla ice cream and you prefer vanilla ice cream over strawberry ice cream, but you might prefer strawberry ice cream over chocolate ice cream. I'm not just making this up. This is a term called preference reversals, and it's a form of behavioral insight theory, which is something I used to do in my work a very, very long time ago. But my point is, there's no such thing as saying to someone, hey, this is your favorite food or your favorite drink or whatever. People have favorites when they're adults. I definitely have favorite comics, generally. Um, I can think of at least two or three dozen that I would view to be 10 out of 10 comics, but I don't have a favorite comic because I'm not a fucking child. And people that ask me questions like that are trying to reduce and diminutize the hobby. They're, they're like people that say, hey, what's your favorite video game? I have different favorite video games for different things. There's retro video games in the Mega Drive I like to play. There's video games I have to play on my Switch that I would never play on my Xbox One. The list goes on. But when people try to force you to really fit your hobby and your interest into a one sentence tweetable soundbite, then they're not trying to understand it. What they're trying to do is force you to make it understandable in a way that they don't have to think very hard at all. They're trying to reduce and compress what can be a complex and broad and really engaging an important part of someone's life, like comics or DVDs or video games. And they're trying to compress it into a one sentence sound bite so it's easy for them to understand. It's not because they want to understand or because they care. 
It's because they're diminutizing the hobby. And I really fucking hate it when people ask me what my favorite comic is or what comic I'd grab if my flat was on fire. I never ask people what their favorite comics are. I never do it because it's a it's a patronizing childish question. Um, if I'm to ask someone about comics, I try to get a flavor of what sort of comics they're into. I don't ask them what their favorite comic is. What I ask people is, you know, name your top five comics or what five comics would you recommend to anyone? That sort of thing. And those are really fair questions, I feel, to get a feel of what someone's tastes are like. The last time I asked someone a question like that, he said his favorite comics were um, The Killing Joke, Watchmen, Mouse, Sandman, and something else. So basically five really trite, predictable New York Times bestseller list comics. The sort of things that a Google search would have as like five amazing comics to recommend. Incidentally, they were all comics that I would say um, are popular comics it's okay not to like. And in fact, I've done videos in that vein on several of those. But that at least gives me a much better flavor as to what someone's general kind of inclination towards comics is asking someone what their favorite comic is asking someone what their favorite movie is that doesn't really mean anything your your, your favorite movie could be schindler's list that doesn't mean you're a, you're not a massive fan of the mcu it just means i try to reduce an incredibly complex area of human experience into one sentence which of course doesn't tell me very much that said, I'm going to level with you. When people ask me, what is your favourite comic? Or what is your Desert Island comic book or something? Um, I don't say all this to them. Obviously not. Because, you know, I don't want to be an absolute dick. I'm, t I'm trying to be friends with people. I'm trying to be nice to people. If you're trying to date someone or just, you know, generally build up a rapport with anyone, don't, don't answer like this. When someone asks me what's my favourite comic, I basically lie to them. Um, whatever lie I tell is literally whatever the first comic I can think of is. Often I just say Watchmen because everyone's heard of Watchmen. So I'm like, oh, Watchmen's my favorite comic. And they go, oh, that's amazing. Watchmen's a really clever comic. And I'm like, oh, yes, it is. It's by whoever. And I go into a whole thing because I'd rather lie to them than explain to them all the reasons that they're fucking imbeciles and why I view them with contempt. So rather than pointing out the reasons I view them with contempt, I just die a little bit, a bit inside and I just make up some random placeholder answer that satiates their you know, very passing kind of interest in this question. That's one frequently asked question I really fucking hate. Another frequently asked question that I cannot stand, and this is just so pervasive. Hey, what's your most expensive comic? This, I, I, I used to be general about, sort of generous about this. I used to think to myself, this came from um, misunderstanding comics due to the way it's reported on television and news. So often in mainstream media, the only time you hear about comics is when someone says something like, um, oh, uh, uh, Action Comics issue one was found in someone's attic and it got sold for five million pounds. Or someone found Detective Comics 27 or ASM, uh, or your AF15, uh, Amazing Fantasy 15, the, fir the first appearance of Spider-Man. And they sold it for a bajillion pounds. And that's how these things get reported that's how these things get um mainstream attention so for someone who's not into comics i can understand that's that's why they kind of measure comics in that way but increasingly i really think i'm being too generous because i don't think that's the case and that's not because i personally don't collect comics for money i mean i mean i don't i don't speculate i'm not in it for the money i'm just in it for the stories as you can tell from my custom comics and the sort of custom comics i make i don't collect it for monetary reasons i don't really care about the price whether it's something expensive or something cheap but that's not the reason that this question annoys me the reason it annoys me lots is because i no longer think that people who just have a shallow understanding of comics and, and the comic industry from television and news and so on and the reason I no longer believe that is because often when people ask what's my most expensive comic, what they then ask is, oh, are you going to sell it? Or what are you going to do with it? And and especially for myself as a YouTuber, um, people go, oh, you've got a YouTube channel. Are you getting money from a YouTube channel? Are you are you selling your, um, your custom buying comics? I do a lot of artwork in my own time. Nothing great. I've shown a bit of it on the channel. It's just a lot of pen and ink stuff. You know, it's pretty good. People often look at it and go, oh, wow, that art's great. 
Have you thought about selling it? I'm doing a lot of emulation in my own time. I'm emulating video games. I haven't done anything on the channel about it because, you know, it's not that sort of channel unless people really want it. But I've shown some of my friends and straight away, they're like, oh, wow, are you going to sell this? Are you going to make a YouTube video about it and get loads of views? Are you going to go onto a Facebook community and talk about it loads so, you know, you can sell the knowledge or people can share it and people can see it? And that's the thing. Constantly, people are saying, oh, you need to share this. People need to see this. You need to sell this. You need to monetize this. You need to monetize the YouTube channels. You need to monetize the custom comics. You need to monetize my books, uh, which I self-publish. And constantly, it's a, it's a case of do it for the money. How much money are you getting? And when I say my YouTube channel is not monetized, when I say I don't sell my artwork and all my, all my content is free, I don't want to have a Patreon or anything like that, people turn to me and they say, well, that's a waste. That's a real waste. What's the point of doing this artwork if you're not selling it? What's the point of writing these books and self-publishing No Gods or Kings if you're only selling it for 99 cents or 99 pence for a book? What's the point? It's a waste. And that tells me a huge amount about the psychology of these people, because really what that says is that these are people that don't do anything for the sake of doing anything. They don't enjoy anything for the sake of enjoying anything. They only do it for money or for social approval. And when money or social approval becomes your metric for all of your skills and all of your hobbies and all of your pastimes, then you're living a shallow, superficial and really fucking depressing life. I hate to sound judgmental when I say that, but if the measure you have for any hobby, any skill, anything anyone does for fun is whether or not it makes money or whether or not other people provide likes or reshares or tweets, that's, that's dangerous. That's not healthy. You should have something in your life where you do it purely for the fun. Whether or not it's cooking or whether or not it's drawing. If you cook for fun, and someone turns to you and goes, oh, well, are, are you going to start a cupcake business? Have you thought about becoming a professional caterer? Have you got a website? You haven't got any of those things. Then what's the point in, cake, in cakes? What's the point in cooking at all? That, that's a perspective lots of people have, increasingly so. And that's something I find absolutely tragic. And more often, people I meet like that, I just I find really difficult to be around. That whole mentality is both difficult and dangerous. That's why whole vids are dangerous. That's why social media is dangerous. And that's why I don't do whole vids and the same reason I don't do social media. If I did whole videos, it would all be about that next video, that one-upmanship, that case of, hey, here, here's what I bought now. Look at what I'm going to buy later. Hey, I found this really rare thing. Look how much it cost me. And with social media, how people are liking, tweeting, reposting, is going for the endorphins, is going for the likes. Can I just point out, I'm not saying I'm better than any of this at all, under any circumstances. I'm worse. I'm weaker than any of this. That's why I stay off social media. That's why I don't do whole videos, because I don't have the self-control. I can see that this would be bad for me, because it is a bad psychological state for people to get to. And the problem is, so many people have this psychological perspective, where money or social approval are the only things that matter. And I don't do that. Again, I don't launch into this six minute rant about why people are stupid and full of shit for asking me a question like what's a more expensive comic. What I do is I generally lie to them and patronize them and provide some kind of condescending answer that they're happy with rather than explain to them all the reasons that I hate them or wish they would die. And instead I die a little inside. I, I really have two kind of responses when people ask me what my most expensive comic is. One, I just kind of point to a comic and I go, oh, that one costs like £500. I make up a figure and I point out a random comic. There are people that have no idea what I'm talking about, so I just lie. It just makes them happy and it just ends the conversation as soon as possible. Alternatively, if I suspect they might have, you know, at least a couple of brain cells to rub together, then I might say something else. I might, I might have a counter question like, I don't know. What's your most expensive DVD? And people turn around, they go, well, I don't buy DVDs because they're expensive. I buy them just to watch them. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's the same thing I do with comics. Increasingly, that question actually doesn't work anymore because if I go, what's the most expensive DVD? And people are like, what's a DVD? Everyone streams. What decade are you from? So 
unless I want to go down that distraction conversation, then I basically just lie to them and I just make up a figure and point out a random comic and say that's the most expensive comic. But oh man, it's a question I really fucking hate. Number three, um, these three things that annoy me, by the way, aren't ranked in any kind of order because, as I said early on, orders don't really mean much. I don't have a number one annoying question because it kind of varies on the day. But um, the, th the third one that we're going to get to in this video, and this is a general one. And again, please, this isn't aimed at anyone who watches any of my videos and any comments that I've had over the last few months, at least. One question I get all the goddamn time is can I do a reading map for all of DC? Like all of DC Comics? Or can I do a reading map for all of the Marvel 616? Which by the way is something like 30,000 comics, according to Marvel Unlimited, it's 30,000 comics. And people are like, can you do a reading map for all that? I guess some really weird ones. I got one person asking me, can I do, can I do a reading map of every single, um, uh, what was it? I think it was every single uh, comic which showed the character of Spawn, but only from the right-hand side of his face. Can I do a list of that? And I was like, no. Like, what? No. So I guess the first thing that I have to ask when people say to me, can you do a map for all DC? Or can you do a map for all Marvel? Or any of the, the increasingly bizarre requests I get for reading maps. My first question is, what are you going to do with that information? Genuinely, and, and this isn't a criticism, this isn't having to go at my readership or comic readership in general, but what are you going to do with the information of an entire reading map for all of Marvel Comics? Because I'll tell you what you're definitely not going to do. You're definitely not going to fucking read them. And I say that with all humility, I'm someone who hasn't read all the Marvel 616 comics. Good Lord, no. And I definitely haven't read all of DC Comics by a massive margin. God, no. So who is going to use this map? Who, like, What do you need this map for other than just to look at it and go, oh, that exists, and then do something else? One of the most popular videos on my channel, even now, like three or four years after I released it, is my guide to the DC New 52. And the reason for that is that that guide is, or it was at the time, and it still is now, the internet's most comprehensive guide to the DC New 52. It covers all 3,600 issues. I read every single one, and I did a reading guide. And if you look at the analytics of those videos, as a, as a consumer of content on YouTube, you won't be able to see the analytics the same way I can as the owner of the channel. But looking at the analytics of those videos, it is very obvious that a lot of people watch the introduction, a lot of people watch the first few Justice League ones, there's then a major dip when we get to things like um, Superman, it then goes up a bit when we get to Batman, of people that are still watching or maybe just watching the Batman videos, and then it absolutely goes off a cliff. No one is is reading the Convergence video. No one is re is watching the videos on on Earth Two, or the the New Storm, or the Goofy, or any like like the numbers are small. We're talking vanishingly small. I'm not saying that no one on the internet ha has gone through my guide and read all the comics. I'm sure there's a few people that have done that. A few people made it all the way to the last video in that series, to video number thirty one, and that's fair enough. But what I know is that the vast majority, I would say 19, 95% at least, tail off literally during the Justice League videos. They're all very excited that I've done a DC New 52 map, and that's great, and I'm glad that I've done one, and it was fun. But what have you done with that information? You haven't used it to read the DC New 52, and that's fine. That's not how those maps were designed. The reason that all those videos are in sections is so people can just jump in and just read Superman. Or you can jump in and just read the Batman comics. And, and that's why it was segmented into families. Because I know people are normal people. No one needs an entire reading map of the entire Marvel 616 universe. No one needs that. No one's going to read that. I haven't read all those. It's, it's, just, it's just not going to happen. I do small reading maps. Um, I'm going to do a Black Widow one relatively soon in the next couple of weeks. So I'm just currently just powering through the 100 or so Black Widow issues there aren't many of them so why not i've done ones for thunderbolts which is a couple of hundred issues i've done one for marvel zombies i've done small self-contained things and people have read those and, and that's great but the whole of marvel or the whole of dc come on give me a fucking break you're not going to do anything with that information 
that said, I mean, the plan is to ultimately do a reading map for the entire Marvel Universe, the whole 616. Yes, all 30,000 issues. Yes, that is the plan. Um, and the plan is, to be honest, to do the entire reading map for all of DC. Apart from Batman, which I suspect I might completely ignore just to annoy everyone. But otherwise, everyone else. Yeah, ultimately, that's the plan. I mean, it's going to take a while. It's going to take 10 years. It's going to take longer than 10 years. But what else am I going to do? So, uh, yeah, maybe I'm the asshole. Maybe when people ask me for that reading map of the entire Marvel Universe or the entire DC Universe, then do you know what? The answer I give people is, you know, maybe one day. And do you know what the truth is? Fuck it, maybe one day. Apart from that guy who wanted me to do everything from the right-hand side of, of Spawn's face. You're just weird. Thanks for listening, everyone. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. As always, please follow me on Twitter at I am Thomas Judge, where I will post uh, a daily review of whatever comics I've been reading. You can get an idea of what I'm up to on the channel. Um, and as always, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon.com and checking out my prose novel about superheroes. It's a completely original piece of work. The first episode in it is called Arrivals, and the series as a whole is called No Gods or Kings. You can find an excerpt of that on my website, nogodsorkings.com. Until next time, everybody, stay classy.